Namaste and welcome to the Thursday night English show. And today we have Colonel Arasan Singh, well known to you. He is ex raw research and analysis wing. And of course, we also have Shri Vibhuti Ja as always on Thursday night. Welcome to you, Colonel Arasan Singh Ji. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening to all my uh, listeners. And today, we would like to introduce you on a very important topic. And we just saw day before yesterday, there was a very big blast in Coimbatore. And uh, normally, we would have expected that uh, such blasts uh, okay, would be taken care of by the local uh, state government. But this seems to have set off some kind of an alarm bell. What is uh, so important about this particular blast in Coimbatore? Does it have international ramifications? Are you asking me, sir? Yes, yes sir. The question yeah. is addressed to you. Uh, look, uh, uh, 23rd October, this uh, uh, this happened. It was a terror plot. And uh, if you compare, you know, with what happened in uh, uh, 19, uh, February 1998, then there is a, I mean, uh, you would reach the conclusion that in the last 24 years, nothing has changed. The characters were almost the same. The, I mean, the principal place, the political response was the same. The jihadi narrative was the same. I'll take your mind back to 1998, you know, when this serial blast in Kuala just like the one we had in uh, Mumbai in 93 had taken place. At 11 location, bombs went off. More than 50, I think some 60, uh, about 60 people were killed. The main target would, uh, was Mr. Lal Krishna Advani, who was to address a public meeting that day. But uh, his flight got delayed so from, Thiru, uh, you know, from Thiruvanthapuram, something of that sort happened. So he was two and a half hours late. So he escaped by an act of providence. And the man who was the mastermind, apart from Madani, was a man called S.A. Basha. Now, uh, in this blast, amongst the, you know, uh, the boys, the uh, jihadi boys who have been apprehended is S.A. Basha's nephew by the name of uh, Muhammad Talia. Now, uh, I may add here that an out of uh, uh, these, you know, five uh, people who have been apprehended, three of them carry the, uh, you know, the prefix uh, of Muhammad with the names. And uh, well, I don't know. It is for some reason that the Chinese have banned this uh, very name because the, this is height of Mohammedanism. That out of five jihadis. Four are doing it. Uh, three, at least, you know, carry the, you know, the name of Muhammad. So uh, uh, there might be a logic to what the Ch Ch Chinese have done. But uh, as I told you that time, uh, uh, blast went off, you know, uh, on eleven locations, uh, including a temple, uh, including a temple, uh, and now the target was. Uh, uh, Sangameshwara Temple, and I'm, I'm given to believe that this temple was built 2000 years ago by the Chola King Kalikaran. So, in terms of uh, you know response, and I told you about the uh, motivation, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed in 24 years, and it is not going to change uh, as well. Yes, at that time the organization was Al Umma, which was again which had ISI links, and it was a uh, global jihadi organization, as the name suggests. And uh, S.A. Basha was the head of that uh, organization. The trigger is the same. That time, you know, the trigger was that 18 Muslim youth were killed in a police action. And the police probably was uh, responding to a brutal killing of a constable 
by by you know some jihadis so uh, uh, now the trigger is that you know uh, when there was a uh, crackdown uh, in the entire country on the popular front of india and lot of their cadres were arrested three three jihadi youths they decided to carry out jihadi attacks they tried to tried to set two cars to uh, uh, one truck and two uh, uh, you know auto rickshaws on fire and the police arrested them so this was uh, you know the, uh, this was in response to that crack crackdown and then the chain, chain of these responses started and you had one uh, person from sdpi who uh, who tried to throw a petrol bomb, uh, bomb on the bjp headquarters the bjp headquarters was targeted in 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 in, in 1998 as as well so uh, this is how this cha chain of events uh, uh, to, uh, took uh, took place and uh, well i must uh, say this that uh, uh, the pfi was banned on 28th september as we all know but the sdpi was not banned and may i tell you that what is jamaatul dawa to lashkar e toiba the sdpi is to the pfi well they have the cloak of you know social work and you know uh, social work and uh, you know uh, of, a, uh, of a political uh, political outfit but actually that is just as i said only a cloak to conceal their agenda of gazwai remember that you know once you put on that political cloak it gives you a lot of latitude in terms of dealing with other political parties you know for vote bank politics and vote bank politics is also essentially in pursuance of gazwai hind so i don't know it's a uh, very sad that they have escaped uh, escaped the ba uh, ban well uh, uh, if i may say that you know gazwai hind is something which uh, consciously and unconsciously most political parties have given have been given uh, have been giving patronage to rights and independence because they would not get the votes without catering or without pandering to this uh, islamic concept of gazwai hind rather it is enjoined by the islamic scriptures and no muslim can jettison this concept because that would amount to blasphemy and i myself have been on television on many times till today no muslim panelist has tried to decry has even dared to decry this concept uh well as long as you know uh, the anti hindu component remains in the polity of india gazwai hind will thrive and grow because essentially global jihad is our subcontinent is oriented towards you know anti hinduism or you may call it anti hindu hindutva now the most uh, you know uh, uh, serious part is that this has got an international dimension there is a convergence of interest between pakistan china and the global jihadis within the country and if i may dare say that about 70 to 80% of the muslim population in india are directly or indirectly consciously or subconsciously adherents to the concept of glo uh, global jihad now why the the political parties want i know uh, want uh, this global jihad because for reasons of you know for reasons of vote bank politics they couldn't be bothered about you know larger Uh, larger issues no 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 one has ever bothered 
the pakistanis of course they would like to this you know this global jihad is both in pakistan organizations both in pakistan and india like lashkar e toiba and jaish e mohammed to retain their teeth for conduct a proxy war and the chinese of course they you know they they, they want these organizations uh, to 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 carry on with the proxy war because that gives them uh, you know that uh, that keeps india unstable which is the interests of the chinese so therefore there is a convergence of geopolitical or a strategic incest with the furtherance of global jihad with the jihadi you know elements in india and pakistan and china as countries so this is a typical you know when we talk of internal front and external front or third front or two front this is one dimension of internal and external front situation or a three front situation i have given you now the sad part is that you know this there has been a rapid expansion of of the poly, uh, you know of the pfi the popular front of india was it possible without the support and simple sympathy and support of the muslims in india at large i don't think so look at their expansion since they were formed in 2006 and this place koimbatore koimbatore is the epicenter if i may say is the epicenter of global jihad not only in the southern part of india but in india you all know that three organizations national democratic front ndf karnataka uh, dignity forum and manitha niti pasrai sab you know tamil nadu organization they all you know jihadi organization they all merged to in 2006 to form the pfi so it covered the territory of of uh, karnataka tamil nadu and kerala now the place koimbatore is ideally located for conduct of jihadi operations and logistics as far as southern india is concerned it is located in the southern part of the nilgiris it is a part of the same ecosystem as the malabar jihadi you know uh, uh, the the malas uh, uh, malabar area which is you know which is the uh, historically which has been the biggest center of of, of jihad i am talking about you know the uh, districts of uh, uh, districts of kanur kozi kozi kasar board kozi board kanur uh, malapuram why not from where ram gandhi you know i mean uh, should for by who represents the white right core constituency and then of course of course, of course coimbatore now if you extend it further it goes right up right in the west it goes right up till lakshadweep and if you go eastwards it goes right up to sri lanka now why i am saying this that coimbatore there was there were very strong footprints of the eastern of of coimbatore as far as the eastern bombings of sri lanka was concerned the uh, gentleman i i am sorry to say i use this word the jihadi boy who was who killed himself in the you know in, in october 23 jamesha jamesha musbin was a was a disciple was a jihadi disciple of zairan hashim zairan hashim was the mastermind of the sri lankan blast eastern bombings as we say 
269 people were killed. And Jamesha Musbin wanted, as you know, as uh, uh, evidence is building up, it seems that he wanted to replicate the Eastern uh, bombings. Now, uh, Zahran Hashmi, he, uh, he belongs to that, you know, Batikaloa district, but uh, Batikaloa region of, uh, you know, eastern portion of, of Sri Lanka. Uh, well, he had, you know, used to give online lessons on Quran, etc., responsible for indoctrination of so many, you know, youth in the Indian subcontinent, especially southern part of India. He presided over an organization called Sri Lankan Tohi Jamaat. Subsequently, an affiliate organization or a branch, you may say, of this Sri Lankan Tohi Jamaat was established in Tamil Nadu in Coimbatore by the name of Tamil Nadu Tohi Jamaat. And this suicide bomber or, or this jihadi who uh, no, got killed, Jamesha Muspin, he was attending, he, he was indoctrinated in the mosques in Coimbatore, uh, you know, uh, in classes run by the TNTJ, that is Tamil Nadu Tawhid Jamaat. So this is the, uh, uh, you know, problem. And uh, that is why I say that uh, uh, Coimbatore is, is, the, is the new center of gravity as far as global jihad is concerned. And not only that, it is part of the larger ecosystem with the Malabar region and uh, also, but it also gives them, it also gives them, you know, that uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the latitude to push themselves across the southern uh, coast of, uh, uh, the, the western coast of India upwards, and that is what they, they, they have done. Now, the problem is, uh, that uh, why has it come to this pass? And the question uh, you asked at the beginning, you know, about the how states perceive this problem and how the you know the center perceives this problem. Now, any you know terrorist activity, terrorist organization, jihadi outfits, global jihad, sir, you have been the IAS. I mean, in the India administrative service. And uh, state administration is has to work in certain parameters. They are not given to think on a you know, pan-Indian basis or global basis. So I, I, I don't blame them or, or whatever it is. And then, of course, the political. The political element or compulsion also comes in. So any of these problems, you know, whether it is jihad or any type of terrorism, the state apparatus treats it treats it as a law and order problem. Why the you know institutions like NIA see it through the prism of internal security? But these you know jihadi organizations they are very clever, as I told you. I just give you an example of SDPI. They are very clever in exploiting these, these cracks between the imperatives of law and order and imperatives of internal security. And that is why they have thrived. But much of this you know, problem has been you know, uh, resolved by, by, uh, with the establishment of the NIA, National Investigation Agency. And thank God, one of the very positive outcomes after the in, in, after the introspection of 2611 was this establishment of NIA. And I say that if the NIA was not there, sir, probably this entire country would have been consumed by jihad. Uh, if I can interrupt you at this point, do you see any connection between the international forces who want India dismembered 
and uh, the international jihad sir i i gave you i gave you the example of uh, china now uh, people uh, some people must be bewildered that uh, china which is facing uh, so much of problem uh, with you know uh, with jihadi elements in the in, in the xinjiang province it should come to the aid or rescue of jaish e mohammed and lashkar e taiba for very simple reason as I, as i said that they feel that these organizations are excellent leverages against india so the chinese are interested in global jihad against india the pakistanis are interested in global labor jihad against india and your own people here very very sizable sizable segment are interested in that and since 47 nothing has changed i was just before coming to your program i was just reading uh you know uh, a speech given by sardar patel way back in 1947 uh, you know uh, 47 48 after the you know tribal uh, so called tribal invasion of kashmir had taken place and he chastised the muslims of lucknow that you are the ones who demanded for pakistan and none of you none of you have condemned pakistan for this invasion there after uh, nothing has i mean th- th- things have remained same now if you actually see you know this uh, uh, you were aware of it that uh, you see the population of muslim population in, in kasargod in in in, in, in the malabar kasargod 37.2% kanor 29.43% kozhikode 39.24% uh, malappuram 70.24% why not 28.64% annual growth of population in kerala is 4.6% in malappuram it is 13.4% in 1901 the muslim population of malabar was 30% and now it is 40, 43% so we are all aware about you know this this you know this yeah. see uh, uh, i must tell you that an indian muslim has two components a component that was there before he converted to islam and a con- com- component after he converted now the degree of radicalization to a great extent depends on which component weighs heavy on the other so in that sense the malabar region the malabar region has always been the epicenter of jihad as you know it because they tried from 7th century i mean you know people ask that how is that how is it that you know that they have become you know uh, they are so much you know uh, they are uh, such adherents of global jihad because 7th century ad you know islam uh, you know they started trading you know very uh, intensely with the arabs and then the islam road piggy back and then it had a you know it had a uh, it had a spiritual shade and then it you know like acquired the shape of political islam and then you know full fledged uh, jihad and then you know uh, then came you know the portuguese the portuguese blocked those roads they had declared jihad against the portuguese the french then came in they declared jihad against the uh, then the 30 40 years you know 1763 to 1792 that period uh, 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 period of the haider ali and tipu sultan i mean totally i mean forceful you know uh, force convergence were taken and then the british came sir in 1792 if the british had not come the east india company had not come in 1792 100% of malabar and the entire region of the ecosystem that i was talking is would have been converted to islam so therefore the question that you asked me 
the chinese are using it as leverages the americans could bother i mean you know uh, i can tell you one thing that today most of these you know ultra leftist organizations uh their benefactor is is the us and in some and in some cases the european countries you must have heard of uh, you know revolutionary international movement whose headquarters is, is in chicago so these are these are just you know vectors to be used against against this uh, you know countries but my job is to just sensitize the people to sensitize the people of the country that look these are the elements and now your program today is you know these are the people who want to see the end of modi because he is the biggest stumbling block as far as the growth uh, growth and spread of jihadism is concerned as far as you know the 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 agenda of the maoists are concerned your videshi mahila is the biggest is the biggest is the spearhead of these ultra leftists in this country how many congress leaders have been killed in chatisgarh you had bc shukla and that fellow you know uh, mahinder karma and then they were held as you know that still after that her uh, her lieutenant uh, uh, raj babar called uh, uh, referred to them as revolutionaries so we have seen seen this uh, you know the, the, uh, these vectors these are the vectors which are being used against in india and one last point i would say that you know uh these vectors uh, uh, how uh, these proxy war actually started uh it's my own uh, it's my own analysis that whenever a country has got nuclear power acquires nuclear power it embarks on proxy war. the soviets acquired nuclear power in 1949 cold war started the chinese got it in 66 and you know this naxalite movement you know it was it, it coincided coincided with that the pakistanis acquired nuclear weapon and this jihad is jihad is the start now these these are the imperatives and these are the strategic imperatives within which we have to function and therefore i have i have always said that the third front is the most important thrum, uh, front because remember it is the third front which which feeds the other two fronts now for just for example how 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 much of leverage do you have in china zero mm. absolutely zero do you have any leverage in tibet no i have been in intelligence there is a big gap as far as you know i mean intelligence uh, 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 in tibet is concerned because they are they are one party rule and with that single party i mean i am talking about the people's republic of china this videshi mahila goes and signs a, a mou the communist party for god sake sake is the government in that area and nobody in the country the judiciary when you know the honorable judges who try to try to you know come down heavily on every you know non on um, um, non issues nobody has taken so much you know action after they are also citizens of this country it involves their safety and security also why has nobody said that please show the document the mou that you have signed with the chinese similar mou was signed between jamaat e islami of pakistan and and the uh, communist party uh, the uh, people's republic uh, communist party of china now you see the link these are the forces these are the forces that are being used to destabilize india 
to dislodge Modi. How many times have been, uh, attempts have been made on his life? I was there in Patna, 13th October 2013, when the blast went off. And I, if in your program, I must tell you, there was a, I, I won't go into details, but one fellow, you know, was uh, uh, selling, you know, he had a, he had a tela sort of thing, you know, he was uh, selling some puri and bhaji and all those stuff. He told one of the drivers who confided in me that, sir, I had come at 8 o'clock in the morning from Baksar and he told me, this guy, that why have you come here? This entire area is uh, infested with bombs. Who all were involved in this? God knows. Isra Jaha. Anybody who batted for Isra Jaha wanted to see the last of Modi. Popular Front of India, when the raids took place in Patna, some five, six people had gathered, imagine, right from the southern part of India, from Kerala and Tamil Nadu, in Bihar, they had all congregated to assassinate Modi during his visit to Patna. And assassin this country is not new to assassinations. It started you know, right from the time of Subhash Chandra Bose, then, you know, Lal Bahadur Shastri, Indra Gandhi, Rao, this, this is in our culture, by the way. This is in our culture. So I'll rest my uh, case I, here. Yeah, I, I, if I may just uh, insert a question here, saying, sir, it is wonderful to hear the information that you have shared with us all here. It's absolutely fascinating. But as a layman, people who are watching by the sideline, there is a definite concern that it's, it emerges very clearly, the pandering, the appeasement, all these things are going on. These people want to destroy Hindus, India, Modi is the source of all that. Uh, where exactly is the response from the system and mechanism? Looks like the enemies are playing the game better than us. That's my favorite theme. That in the battle of sports or the battlefield, if the enemy is doing something better, you got to do better than that to win. What are what is happening in India to make sure that this that this destruction plan of things Hindu things India doesn't succeed? Any insight on that? What must Am Admi who is watching this show, listening to the show? What must they feel to get inspired, become awakened, to take do what they must? Because our enemy is doing whatever they are doing. They are playing the game. Are we doing what we must? And uh, before uh, uh, Mr. Singh answers this, uh, may I request the viewers uh, to please ask your questions through WhatsApp or through Super Chat, and also please subscribe to the channel and uh, please. Press the like button. Che, please. Singh Sahib, you freeze ho gaye hai kya? Yeah, that what I, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I just I thought he was asked. No, I got your question and uh, well uh my answer is that uh, uh, the, uh, we had lost in the, uh, I was talking especially about the Hindus, they had lost the battle of narratives. And uh, I'll just give an example. I was in the army when this exodus of Kashmiris took place, Kashmiri Hindus. And we dare call them Kashmiri Pandits. Look at the narrative as if they are not Hindus. So I, I saw there was, uh, there was absolutely no concern. Absolutely no concern. There were apologists who were who banded any number of reasons still very recently. 
about you know some strange reasons some totally totally queer historical facts responsible for his exodus not realizing that this was the eighth exodus so nothing has changed in 1400 years nothing has changed nothing will change you are absolutely right that you know the problem the problem is that unless the basic tenets and the guiding principles of islam change this jihad shall continue but there is a silver lining and that is that thanks to the social media thanks to program like this thanks to participation of people like you that the narrative is undergoing changed at a very rapid pace and that is why and that is why you know those entrenched interests and vested interests they are so uncomfortable tell me how many people in this country i didn't know what was gazwai hind i didn't know about it i never knew about what is in the talaq e bidat i didn't know you know who, you know who, which caliph a caliph was killed by who but thanks to the media nobody knew it and i i don't think our forefathers also knew about it maybe i been mean, very few people but now thanks to social media i i don't know how many people are watching this program but even if i say say if i say you know 10000 people are watching this program sir where do you get an audience of 10000 uh, uh, did you ever get an audience so easily of 10000 political leaders had to dish out money to gather you know people 10000 uh, you know uh, to get a crowd of 10000 rupees 10000 uh, uh, crowd so the narrative is changing very fast and uh, when you are sitting in the united states and i am uh, i am sitting here and look i mean uh, we are uh, we, uh, we are discussing a particular narrative that is and sometimes i feel sir that because i always say because what is not what does not stand to logic what does not stand to reason what is not scientific can never be sanatan and as long as we are scientific in our approach our time has come science logic and truth will triumph satyameva jayate to hoga that's you are totally right yes, about that's that. absolutely right and that's very heartening and uh, you are absolutely right about the changing of narrative i have seen this channel grow from nothing so almost 8 lakh subscribers in less than 2 years so uh, it's happening only because people are interested in this narrative also so that that's is of right. course happening so uh, at the end before we go to the audience questions i would uh, like to ask you what would you suggest to the lay public because we know of course we know all about what governments should be doing but uh, what would you suggest to lay public to make the government do what it should be doing <coughs> i would How to build uh, pressure How to build pressure on the governments no, to do the right thing firstly i would uh, like to people like the people to imagine the consequences if they were to become slaves again slaves to the jihadi or colonizers of any any kind we literally we led a dog's life people don't convert without any reason 
mostly they do it out of fear and some people do it out of inducement then and you know monetary inducement very few. so when uh, you are put in the status of a slave then the, your own honor honor of your mother and sister your daughter is at stake we have, we have got it in a very hard way our our ancestors have sacrificed a lot to ensure that people like you and me were not slaves remember that and even you have to sacrifice your life to retain this freedom you must be prepared to do so sacrifice anything anything and everything because the alternative is too stark is too stark we are the first generation which can even talk like this my my father or my grandfather would never have done it there were no forums there were no outlets the entire apparatus weighed upon us for thousand years the 70 years are very very precious and therefore we must realize put our differences away as long as we are free we can fight amongst ourselves slaves even don't fight and i see this slavish you know the mentality of slave everywhere it's only a slave who can cheat his own people it's only a slave who can be corrupt we we must treat people as our own and all problems will be taken care of right so uh, i think that is a very very sound message to the public and uh, if you have anything uh, mr jha otherwise we go to the questions i think let's go to the questions except that one thing which i wanted to make an observation observation about mr singh saying that our parents and grandparents would not have been able to do what we are able to do today and thanks to the science and technology it's in it's with us it supports us having said that our enemies were doing all that they are doing today in the same environment what prevented us from fighting that out we'll we'll get into that question a little later uh, but let's go to the q and a that's much let's go to the q and a and uh, before that once again reminding everybody that uh, please uh, share the video and press the like button immediately that's the easiest that you can do and uh, all the new viewers please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon also your valuable contributions are solicited for that uh, you can go to the description and press the links that you are watching scrolling below questions run a run day. a day remember to blast okay computer blast is not getting the coverage as something that concerns internal security should why not no because as i told you that uh, it is again the vote bank politics which has been giving patronage to global jihad and remember in 1998 there was a dmk government even now i mean there is a dmk government i said uh, nothing has changed in the last uh, 24 year, uh, years now what went politics 
does impinge on internal security. Islam, which is which does not actually believe in democracy, has been making best of democracy in India in, in furtherance of jihad. And uh, I would say it is it is one of the pitfalls of democracy. Our 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 type of democracy that uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, dimensions the, the the all the dimensions of global jihad the entirety is not discussed by the uh, political leader and somewhere it is in the uh, lost in the din of uh, you know uh, abuses and counter abuses so listen to people like us read what we write and uh, maybe 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 we may be able to give you some facts which may uh, influence your uh, opinion or thinking okay sure next one shiva satya tamil nadu is in a mess dravidianism jihadism rampant conversion etc it's feeding ground for anti-nationals and huge threat can it be salvaged at all What is his question? I, if you could repeat it again. Oh, he's saying there are a lot of problems. Can those problems be salvaged? Can it be? Can Tamil Nadu be saved? Yes, it can be saved. And uh, I was posted in Chennai as a young officer. I recently visited, you know, to give a talk there. There is a very strong. Uh, nationalist uh, component in, in, uh, in Tamil Nadu. But somehow the, uh, the political narrative has suppressed this uh, nationalist uh, component. If I may give you an example, Tamil Nadu. Uh, don't take me the other way, but uh, I, I, would, I would like an answer for the people in Tamil Nadu and Kerala and Karnataka. I am totally for you know, regional languages. Tamil is a very, very rich language, very rich language. But tell me, the kind of, you know, the animosity that is demonstrated towards Hindi, we don't see the same animosity towards Urdu. Now tell me, what is the difference between Urdu and Hindi? Correct. That's can, right. can anybody Absolutely. tell me the difference between Urdu and Hindi? I don't think so. Hmm. Certainly not. If, if there was a difference, Bali, Bali would have crashed right, uh, you know, right in 1950s. So you don't take up arms against, you know, against, uh, you know, Urdu. But why this? Why this hatred? Why this animosity? Why this bitterness? I would like people to introspect. Are bhai, bina, bina verbs ke to koi language ho nahi sakta na? Without verbs, there can be no language. And 100% of verbs in so called Urdu language are taken from Hindi, oblique Sanskrit. So I'm not going to find an answer. A lot of introspection right. needs to be done. Okay, we move to the next question. Yeah. Sanagoma. Log aapko sunke jag rahe hai, kintu abhi bhi mere kai log abhi bhi gehri neend mein hai. Kya kare? Sanatan ko sanatani logo ki awashikta hai. Logo ko samajna hoga, sir. It's a good statement made, Sanagom ji. Thank you. आप कुछ बोलना चाहेंगे इस पे नहीं उनको जो सो रहे उनको झकझोर के उठाइए और क्या कर सकते काल भैरव डियर कर्नल सिंह सर वी मे आल्सो बी एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई डेवलपिंग पैटर्न्स ऑफ जिहाद थ्रू विजुअलाइजेशन ऑफ इवेंट्स बेस्ड इंफॉर्मेशन कोरिलेटेड विद कम्युनिकेशन डेटा एंड कोहर्टली स्टॉप विदाउट डिस्टर्बिंग सो कॉल्ड वोट बैंक योर थॉट्स कॉम्प्लिकेटेड थॉट बट डेफिनेटली वर्थ अ लुक 
so there was an aircraft passing just just explain to me in, in one line what what the, what is saying uh, is that that knowing the data data knowing the actions can we take care of this matter without having to worry about the vote bank pattern yes you will have to you will have to uh, uh, we have to overcome this problem uh, by you know consolidation of people of you know of nationalists uh, their uh, unity should not be frittered away that's what i can say and when well, uh, democracy is also an evolving feature and westminster style is not uh, it, it 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 is not uh, i know etched uh, you know on stone think over it i also think over it but yes this is this is something which you know we are all scared of you know the the evolving demographic as i brought out earlier and uh, well uh, i think the, the the nation the nation the nation takes priority over any form of government or political system or governance it's my personal thought if there is a nation there will be a state and if there is a state i mean it has to be governed the state has to be governed in a manner that it preserves the nation next libertarian problem of kashmir is civilizational not political why our kafir establishment doesn't understand it tripti karan karna hai kya wahi par bhi see a lot of people ask me this question solution bataiye kya solution hai sir we have discussed the problem solution to i mean the, your neighbor china has shown you the, the the way i'm totally in favor of what they're doing because at the end of the day they are doing it for the sake of nation building exactly nation is above democracy democracy is not above nation that's what i said right next and they are they have they are doing it only in a particular area with regard to uyghurs not all muslims in china because they are the ones who were you know uh, who were drifting away they are the ones who were you know involved in global jihad so similarly i mean there is a solution but for that you have need to have gumption political gumption i'm talking about yes yes shiva satya india is already in war hindus are being attacked on all fronts everywhere it's high time even hindus engage in peaceful ways i'll put it in quote and quote just as the enemies are doing i think that's what you said earlier on that yes you got to defend protect and defend your own culture and your own identity i think that's very important right Shiv Satya again. Bureaucrats, especially IAS defense staff, police force, need to be tested and and trained in security threats without political correctness. How can one fight enemy without acknowledging who the enemy is? Both I of totally you have to bureaucracy and defense forces. What do you say? No, no, no. You? I'm totally you know I'm I'm talking a general. That say if if if. Uh, the trouble the, the source of a trouble is a particular uh, you know literature or a scripture or a book then uh, you should know your enemy the, this is the first principle of warfare know your enemy let you in second war what did, did people study about nazism so when the, for last so many years you have been beset by you know a particular a particular ideology you should read and discuss and we sanatanis we must insist on debates and this nonsense of blasphemy 
should not be applied to scare scare away people at the end of the day when you ask you tell me not to you know quote you know not to quote you know mazhabi scriptures you are trying to dissuade me from the path of truth even in a court of law aren't arguments put across how however it may, it may be inconvenient to the other party or their lordships themselves you mean to say it is a blasphemy to read and quote a particular book a, 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 a mazhabi book if a mazhabi if a if a mazhabi his book says that the earth is flat and i quote the very specific re uh, reference does it does it about to blasphemy so in india remember we are a country we share we share almost uh, uh, almost 7500 kilometers border with islamic countries 4100 with bangladesh and you know 3000 uh, uh, 100 with pakistan <clears throat> should we know about it so you have two islamic countries there is one there are communists sitting you know buddhist tibet so another 3440 kilometers is there any country in the world which is you know which is uh, uh, beset with so many isms Tell me one country in this world. So should we compare ourselves with you know the uh, with the Western narrative? Right. Let's move on to the next question, sir. Next question. Yeah. Sanatan is the only Dharma Bhakti sub religion. But Trump Prishma, it was overdue. I gained a lot of knowledge from all nationalist channel. I was never a secular Hindu, but these channels provided me direction. I will campaign for Vibhuti Ji for NY State. Thank you very much, Sanatan ji. Please get in touch with me. I, you know, my entire details. All that you have to go is just reach me out. Reach out to me. Thank you. And if you need my number, I please ask uh, Jaipur Dialogue on the JD Digital. They will give you my number. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay. Raghuram Chadalawada ji. Thank you. Next, Vibhuti ji. Yours. too much too much of democracy is dangerous for any country india is suffering from exactly this west is already down the drain and sinking more <laughs> you have thought on that yeah yes that i think vibhuti ji you yes. know better i know that yes <laughs> and there is a very nice yes. for that right? <laughs> and you had somebody who drained the swamp and That's then right. you filled up the swamp again <laughs> so again <laughs> <laughs> and there is a very classic definition of poison i think it is attributed to some vivekananda when he was asked this question in america what define poison he said anything in excess so when you have something when things boil over that is the, my western audiences love this they say oh my god he must be a genius i said yes he was anyway <laughs> that's beside the point but that's a wonderful thing that question was a nice statement made and i think we need to be careful about that cannot let something become poison all right so with that we come to the end of the session and the questions are over and i thank all the audience so very much and i also thank colonel alison singh ji and shri vibhuti ja jai hind vande mataram jai hind vande mataram thank you vande